day to you people of YouTube. Welcome to this OSCE Pass Neurological Examination Guide. If you need the written guide, it should be appearing on your screen right about now. Kick things off with a nice slick introduction, telling the patient what you will be doing, gain their consent, and also don't forget to mention that they will need to remove their upper garments for you to examine their upper limb. Once you've done your introduction, ask the patient to expose their upper limb and then move on to check for muscle bulk. Uh, you're looking for different types of tremors, abnormal movements, and also having a look around the patient for any adjuncts or paraphernalia. Move on to check the tone of the patient's upper limb by uh, shaking their hand and assessing the grip and the muscle bulk in the hand, but also from the movements you make of the arm, you can assess the tone of the arm itself. Uh, main things to look out for are things like hypotonia, so a flaccid uh, tone in the upper limb, or hypertonia, which is uh, essentially rigidity. A couple of main conditions or clues that you could have if a patient has cogwheel rigidity, so these are jerky movements as you uh, move the arm. This could be an indication of Parkinson's disease. And if there is spasticity, which is an increased tone, then that could be a sign or a giveaway of um, an upper motor neuron lesion. Okay, moving on to check the power of the upper limb. As the examiner, you'll be asking the patient to apply a force against the direction you are pushing or pulling. You're also comparing both sides so that any small subtle differences uh, you can take a note of. Start distally at the fingers and work your way back towards the shoulders. One way to quantify the power the patient might have is to use the MRC scale for muscle power. Now, five out of five would be a full normal range of power against resistance. Uh, four out of five is uh, if they can overcome gravity and also some resistance, but not full resistance. Three out of five is movement, uh, movements that can overcome gravity, but not resistance from uh, the examiner. And two out of five is uh, when the joint can move if gravity is actually eliminated. And one out of five is muscle contractions can be seen, but there's no movement of the joint itself. And uh, obviously zero is no muscle contraction is uh, visible at all. Moving now on to the reflexes, you will be starting with the supinator reflex first, which is C5, C6. You ask the patient to pop their arm across their abdomen, and then you're striking midway up their forearm for the supinator tendon. Remember that as with everything else you've done in the upper limb examination, you check reflexes on both sides to compare for any differences. After that, it will be the biceps reflex. Again, it's C5 and C6 innovation. Uh, to do this, ask the patient to straighten their arm and strike over the biceps tendon in the antecubital fossa. And lastly, moving on to the triceps reflex. Uh, this is innovated by C6 and C7. Uh, to successfully do this, you need the uh, patient's arm to be uh, relaxed. So hold the arm at a 90 degree angle, resting it upon yours. Thereafter, striking the triceps tendon, which is superior to the lateral epicondyle. Move on to check the upper limb for sensation, uh, mainly to light touch, pain, vibration and proprioception. As with before, compare each side and look for any small differences between them. Essentially, what you're looking for is to see if there's a pattern of sensory deficit within uh, dermatomal regions. If there is sensory deficit within a specific category, for example, pain, uh, this could indicate um, a problem with the spinothalamic tract. Uh, whereas if you've got deficits within proprioception, this could indicate problems with the dorsal column. Once you've completed the uh, sensory tests, move on to check uh, the coordination of the upper limbs. Uh, the main two types of tests to do uh, is the finger to nose test. Uh, this is looking for intention tremors. And lastly, it's dystidokinesis, where you ask the patient to uh, move the hand from one side to the other side, and you uh, monitor how they're able to do this, and if they have any difficulty. 
Once you feel the examination is complete, uh, ask the patient to get dressed and thank them for their time. Turn around to the examiner and uh, give them your summarizing statement. They may then go on to ask you about uh, your clinical findings, um, some of your differentials and further investigations to think about. Have a look at our written guide that goes along with this examination, uh, which may give you some clarity on what you're looking for and what some of the findings may indicate. That's at oscipass.com. Um, as always, good luck with your exams and we'll be working hard to bring you another video as soon as we can.